All right. Uh, this is Ben Halligan uh, here with John Garcia, owner of Lookout Brewing in Black Mountain, and uh, doing an interview for entrepreneurial planning. I uh, got your permission to record. Yep. Um, so, uh, my first question Would you consider playing with Beer Garden Open team? Beer Garden Open, what division are they in? Uh, I think we're in third. We play on Sundays, you know. Third. I'm actually already on a team for Sundays right now. All right. Good for you. <laughs> what team? Playing on a Green Man team of all. Oh, things. yeah. But I'll be right. in, like, Division 4, I think. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, my first question pertaining to your business is, uh, what made you decide to start a brewery business? Sure. Um, well, I'd had other businesses in the past another business in the past and uh, it went under when the recession hit and I was selling a, a luxury product so whenever the economy went down luxury sales were the first thing to go and so I went from you know in the in August um, looking to hire three more people to by November I was closing the doors so it was that drastic of a turnaround whenever the recession hit uh, that here we were growing like crazy and making great money to, to not being able to pay for the mortgage. So whenever I finally got back on my feet and uh, started recuperating from all that, I was a bartender at a, at a bar and, and I saw that people drink at um, weddings and people drink at funerals. And so what that says to me is that people drink when times are good and people drink when times are bad. So it was a very kind of consistent business to get into. It wasn't gonna fall away just because some asshole on Wall Street decided to do something not so great for everybody else. <laughs> so uh, it was a safer business to get into and I, was, um, I had started brewing a few batches in home brewing and I absolutely loved the process. And so, yeah, as I was delving into that, you know, here I am doing this like nothing job being a, I, don't, I shouldn't say a nothing job, but I was a bartender at, you know, right. 30 years old. It wasn't old. fulfilling for yeah, you. It was just, and you found this new love with brewing beer. Yeah, I definitely love the process. And, and I know the, you'll typically, when you meet brewers, they'll usually have a lot of similar uh, characteristics, how they're, brain works um, and yeah I I can follow the recipe and I can understand why I'm hitting these numbers and I'm hitting these gravities and I'm adding these things to it you know it's similar to whenever you meet a, a chef for instance or a engineer you'll find a lot of engineers are into brewing right on um, it's process oriented it's like a ladder so you yeah. just realized it was a good fit yeah, I really enjoyed doing it, and um, my wife and I had a little bit of cash, and I said, uh, a very little bit of cash, we had $30,000, and I said, um, this will disappear if we don't put it into something, and I kind of ill-advised, I, I uh, thought thirty grand would make it all happen. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, it did yeah. eventually. Well, that, that leads into my next question, which was, uh, I was curious about the sources of funding. Um, also, like the business concept, which you've kind of alluded to, um, just the absolute uh, passion for brewing beer, and then the structure. Did you, like, I'm sure you probably thought somewhat about the structure of the business. You, um, just a little uh, backstory for the audience. It's a small, uh, kind of uh, small batch targeted brewery in Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you can tell me about the, the structure and the concept. More. Sure. Well, I knew that, um, I knew how much the, the ingredients cost, I knew how much time it took, I knew the basics around brewing. And uh, having been in business before and um, kind of handling the day-to-day -day cash flow, um, you know, I knew what it was to to rent, I didn't quite fully realize what all of the aspects of the brewery were. Um, yeah. But 
I think that's true in any business. You can always. And you you entered into a particularly interesting market yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, I had a lot of a lot of friends and a lot of colleagues, a lot of people that I knew that were able to show up, basically show up and buy beer. So I feel like I somewhat had a leg up on competition at that time. When I was opening up, there was 17 breweries in Buncombe County. And so I felt like I had somewhat of a, not really a leg up is the wrong way of saying it. I was just able to open and I was able to call a bunch of people and be like, can you please come and try out my beer? Were there any so, other breweries in Black Mountain at that time? Pisca is the only one. And, right. Um, and now there's one other now, but we're six years later. They opened up, you know, six years after I opened. So. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, and I assume you you uh, developed a business plan kind of and had a model for that for that small batch kind of style? We did, yeah. I bought a, um, a really, really fancy home brewing system. It's the Ferrari of homebrew systems. It's a Sabco Brew Magic is what it's called and it's it's basically a, basically like a commercial uh, home brewing setup. It's a 15 gallon keg that you brew in. It's a set of three of them and you use them as kettles. So it's really a very entry level way of doing it but I was able to make consistent batches on it and it's much more than what you'd have in a homebrew system. So we uh, went about you know, finding a spot to rent, you know, it was only, you know, eight, uh, 1,600 square feet. And uh, there's room for expansion in the building. Um, it was a four unit building. So yeah, there was room to grow and it was affordable. I could afford it on my other income. Um, I was doing a few other side jobs at the same time whenever I opened it. And uh, so I knew that I can afford it. Uh, that was the most important thing. So yeah, I opened up with no debt. I built the bar, I built the cooler, I built the nice. walls, I ripped out the ceiling in there, we tore out the carpet, we, you know, fixed everything, painted everything. So that was yeah. the other side, is being able to be multifaceted in, in what all I could do with it. I couldn't have opened with $30,000 if I had to hire a painter and a contractor to build this and build that, so luckily I, I was able to build that stuff. Yeah. And your primary business partner is your wife, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, what do you like most about being an entrepreneur? Um, well, there's a lot of great things about it. And I think first off is the creativity side of things. Being able to set, set these goals. And uh, I don't know, you'll hear me talking about stuff like that in a lot of aspects of my life. I love lists well and, and I, usually I'll I give a plug for your uh, your your latest uh, uh, beer you let me sample it was amazing well thank you thank you yeah the hop shine that changed everything that was the that was the turning point in the brewery was the hop shine yeah I'd say that the best part of entrepreneurial um, you know being an op entrepreneur is the creativity that it allows you to to delve into you chose what you wanted to do and so you you set your hours, you set your goals, you set your ceiling and the floor, I guess, too. So, <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's it's great being able to work for yourself. The dislikes? The dislikes are how difficult our government, society makes it to be in business. It's amazingly hard to be in business from the type of repetition and forms to taxes to permits to any there's no easy way to get into business like you really the second you think you know everything about it the form changes and there's a new tax code for this and there's a new amount there's a new percentage so it's really so difficult insurance alone I mean I carry four different kinds of insurance I pay seven different taxes you a lot know, of bureaucracy. I pay an invisible person. You know that? Hmm. My payroll, we'll just use round numbers. If my payroll, if I add up the hours and the wages for these people and it's a thousand dollars, I have a thousand dollars in payroll taxes that I pay on top of that. 
that's an that's a whole another crew of people. That's a whole it's double what I would be doing. Right. So it's those type of things that make it difficult that I believe that honestly if our society was to really take a stance on this and be like let's be about small business it would be about making it much easier to just say I would love it if somebody just came up and said give me 20% of what you do and be like you got it you got it I got you I'll pay you 20% of what I bring in and and that's all my taxes my insurance or even if it was 50% I mean you can make up any number it doesn't matter what it is we did. We did. Awesome. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks You're so much. Welcome. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a good answer, um, and it goes to my next question. So greatest challenges is that bureaucracy uh, the greatest challenge, or is there something else? Um, I would say that uh, well, my business might be different than a lot of others because I don't have a bunch of investors and a bunch of cash sitting around I don't I don't have the right the financial capital right I don't have a big bank that's just sitting there waiting for me to spend I was getting quotes on getting my van wrapped and I you know got quotes 10 years ago to get my truck wrapped and I got one the other day and you're like it's four thousand dollars just for the the marketing just to, advertising that's just to wrap the van there's nothing else to it it's just like some stickers on the van it's vinyl it's whatever I mean right it's cool, but oh my god, that's a that's yeah. a vehicle, right? Yeah, there. that's a big expense. But yeah, I would. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of little things. I'd say cash flow is probably the biggest hurdle, but that's not true for all businesses. It does get whenever you do have the cash flow and you do have the investors, and that comes down to your business plan. If you write your business plan well enough and you go after funding a different way than I do. I did it much more difficult. I don't have the investors. I don't have right. the loans, so I don't have the debt. So there's that nice part of it. But, I mean, $200,000 actually only cost you $2,500 a month. So it's really not that hard if you had. Yeah, it brings the, the challenge of the controlling the business. All of it falls on your shoulders. And I, the reason I don't do that is much more like personal than versus you know, the next business is fine with getting that loan. I don't like those loans. I don't like getting into that type of debt because I saw with my last business what happens with sure. the economy shifting. And I don't want to be put on the spot, yeah. you know, where it's all of a sudden the bank says, you know, you yeah. owe me all that money and I need it right now. Your wife's invested, your family's invested. Um, and uh, and actually, I think the small smaller business model works for you especially given black mountain size and that mm-hmm. kind of niche market that you've tapped into yeah certainly. um do you wish you would have done anything differently i guess maybe financing but it seems ultimately like no pretty, yeah. um i like you, you know it is kind of nice that my biggest hurdle is cash flow um you know i do find those forms boring and repetitious but they are pretty simple at this point six years in I can do I did my sales and use tax today in four minutes you know nice doesn't take me any time at all to spend two grand <laughs> right um, but yeah it's so yeah, those things are, are simple but I wouldn't want to really trade that I'd say if I was starting over I probably would have gone after the first three rules of business a little bit better and gone after location 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 okay I was in my In my business, it would have been, uh, if I was two blocks over, it might have meant quite a bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, ultimately, I think I'm in a pretty good boat. Cool. Uh, Another plug, go find Lookout Brewing. It's (laughs) worth it. Um, (laughs) Thank you. uh, So, you kind of, what advice would you give someone starting a brewery? It doesn't have to be here, necessarily, Mm -hmm. but... But anywhere, and and you kind of alluded to some of the key business aspects, but really targeting the brewery. Um, sure, brewery specific. It's pretty easy with the brewery. Is focus on the liquid. It really is about that. And right now, I told you earlier, I think there might be breweries closing over the next five years, um, because you're seeing a lot of breweries that aren't in it for the liquid. 
and uh, here we are in you know Beer City USA, so we're pretty spoiled with some pretty decent beer everywhere. You turn there's, I mean we're having you know a beer by Asheville Brewing Company that's great, and you can go to Green Man and get a great beer. You can go to Highland and Wicked Weed and anybody else, and I mean in particular. Zillico is doing some amazing things that aren't being done by a lot of other breweries. Yeah, they're relatively new on the scene, right? They are. They are. And, uh, you know, so we're spoiled with that, having these good breweries around. But whenever you go to other parts of the country and you say, you know, I went to, I, I shouldn't name any towns, but I went to a big city and where do I go? Where should I go? And my friends say, well, really, there's that one and then there's the 30 others that are, eh, not so good. Mm. So, yeah, the liquid's by far the most important thing. And then after that... And just for our, our layman's out there, the liquid is... Beer. Yeah. Yep. Be about the beer. But if you've got a good plan, if you've got a good business plan, you know, being cool is the toughest part. And I find it very hard in my my brewery because I'm much more simple. I'm much... I mean, shit. I'm wearing a gray hoodie and some freaking ugly work pants it's a good looking hoodie though <laughs> but being cool whenever you walk into um and one brewery stood out to me when i went into the Vale in richmond virginia um man it was cool and when you walk into burial here in Asheville, man it's cool you know and so once you get past the liquid part of it it's really like the brand how to build the brand whenever you get to picking out tables and chairs and t-shirts and pint glasses and all these things that are the the brand that is probably after the liquid developing the brand entirely and having a really clear image of where you're going to go i mean you think you have a good idea for a name of a beer make sure that that beer is going to tie into a beer you're going to make in five years make sure that you're not going to name something stupid that doesn't tie in that you're like, ah, oh, I got that one weirdo beer that I, I yeah. messed up you on the name. You always want to be brand-centered. Yes. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. Yeah, make it cool. Make it, you know, and if, if you're like me and you're not quite cool like that, I wish I'd hired somebody that was. <laughs> I wish I'd found a, you know, marketing guru that is just... You know, that dude that w always wears the belt that matches his shirt. You know, you, you, know, you mentioned going. burial, and yeah. uh, I I had to buy a burial t-shirt just because I thought it was that bad. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, they have the the it factor. They, they also have people. some pretty damn good beer. Well, they focused on the liquid first, and then they had the brand to surround it. So. Um, last question. Uh, do you feel the opportunity exists for a successful small batch or... Otherwise, brewery located in Swannanoa. Yes. Yeah, that area, whenever you start looking at um, all the analytics around the number of people moving to the area, the average age, you're looking at a lot of retirement communities. That's really good for expendable income. People that buy beer <laughs> have to be able to afford it. And if you're doing a small craft product, chances are you need a higher price point. Where are people going to buy that? Well, Black Mountain's right down the street, a lot of retirement communities. Asheville's right up the street, a lot of retirement communities. You have a very beer uh, knowledgeable crowd built in. I mean, you have 35 breweries in the area, so your average customer, whether they're you know 21 years old or they're 55 years old, generally knows to expect a $5 pint, $6 pint, and if you're in town, town an $8 pint. Um, so you have to be aware of who your customer is and Swannanoa for instance would be a pretty good area to to be in because it's growing yeah and it's only going to keep growing it's a very small uh, population compared to the areas surrounding it on either side so that would have been my last question but now I'm curious about the growth for Lookout sure well my plan's a lot different than other breweries so my plan is much more I'm going after the best beer in the world that beer that I gave you a minute ago, the Hopshine. Like Which the is reason. excellent. Absolutely delicious. I love it. I absolutely love that beer. But I'm going after the best beer in the world. So I tell people the same story every time. And they, where are you going to be in five years? Probably pretty close to where I'm at now. But maybe on a bigger scale, but not in Ingalls. When's the last time you bought the best ketchup in the world? 
was it at Ingalls or Kroger or anything like that? I, mean, I highly doubt you got the best French fries in the world from a grocery store. I mean, did you get it from a mass, you know, production thing? No. I mean, chances are the best pizza you ever had came from, you know, some small moment down the road. Yeah, the best Philly cheesesteak comes from this place that's maybe 16 feet wide and 40 feet long, and you have to yell at the lady to get your cheesesteak order in. If I'm after the best beer in the world, we're probably going to stay pretty small. Well, that'll um, drive the demand, I'm sure. Well, yeah, it's like soup. You know, if I make you soup, it's probably pretty good. If I make soup for 100, it's probably not quite as good as soup for one. So the same with beer. I think that for me to be going after the best product in the world, I can't get too big. So we're not going to get into massive distribution. We're only going to distribute cans. We're not going to distribute kegs. We're not going to do draft. I'm not going to depend on some draft line tech that has never cleaned a line before or some bar that never cleans their lines or some bartender to tell my story about my product. There's no story about this beer. And if I didn't know Asheville Brewing Company, I wouldn't know to expect a good beer. Whereas if I have my can in front of somebody, I've already done that marketing, I've already developed that plan, and I put my label in front of them with my information on it, my description of the beer, all of that. So our distribution plan is much smaller, much more focused, much more um, geared towards getting that customer to say, man, that's really good, I wonder where it's from. Oh, it's from Black Mountain. Oh, they use citra hops in this. Oh, it's 6.9% alcohol. Oh, it's this, that, and the other. I've already got my story on that can, so how I distribute will be a much more targeted distribution. And we'll go after much more uh, specific clients as well with that distribution versus Ingles. Like, when's the last time a guy in a Kroger or an Ingles, and I pick on those two just because Harris Teeter, who cares yes, what it is? It's what it's here. You know, when's the last time you got information from the guy on the beer aisle on a great wine or a great beer like tell me about this beer I don't know six ninety nine a six pack I don't know what it is yeah uh, actually the last time I think I got advice about a beer in an Ingles was from a Highland rep mm -hmm. I don't want to have a rep in a grocery store you know I want to have very targeted places go to restaurants like Nine Mile or, or restaurants like this honestly I mean this will be this is where I go yeah and I've run into over a dozen brewery owners in this bar. It's a neighborhood bar. It's sort of a community bar. So yeah, we'll target that distribution to places like this. And kind of go after a much more small uh, circle of distribution so that by the time somebody is selling my product and it's not under my roof, they should be tied to my brand very closely, highly educated about my product. My sales rep is only going to have 30 accounts. You got 40 hours in a work week. I want an hour per account, and then you got 10 hours worth of odd and ends you got to do between them all. So we're going to distribute like that. If I want 30 more accounts, we got to hire another rep. We're not going to put. You look at these distribution reps. They got 75 accounts in downtown Asheville. How much FaceTime are they really getting? How much tie in to that brand are they really getting? Whereas my rep is going to have 30 accounts, and they're going to know his dog's name, they're going to know his kid's name, they're going to know his wife's name, they're going to know the story of the beer, they're going to know about that beer, they're going to know everything because he's going to have an hour a week to dedicate to that staff and get entrenched with that staff to, to have a tie into my brand because it's important if I'm going to try and make the best product in the world, I want everybody to know it. I want them to be proud and why is that beer a dollar more than the next one? Because it's great. And because that guy's a really good guy, and because his sales rep's really cool, and he comes here and spends the time and does the extra to make it worthwhile. It's worth a buck. Pay an extra dollar. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I can see the value in that. And yeah. uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to speak to you. I really appreciate you sharing your story, uh, your business prowess, and... Um, and your perspective on the on the brewing industry absolutely um, yeah thank you john yeah. garcia my pleasure thanks so much